Hey YouTube, I'm back with another motorcycle maintenance video for you. Working on my 1974 Honda CL200, which of course has the same engine as the much more common Honda CB200. And I'm doing a full engine tune-up uh, today because there was like a top end noise I could hear and really scaring the crap out of me. And I haven't um, tuned up this engine in maybe like 3,000 miles. And you gotta do it way more often than that, so I am in trouble. And first thing I'm doing today is I'm going to tighten the cam chain. And so we do that by first taking off the inspection plate. And that way you can, helps you get it into top dead center, as you see I'm doing here. And uh, the reason why you want it in top dead center is that's when the cam chain is in its like a slackest position in relation to the lobes on the cam. Um, other sources say to do this while the engine's running, um, but I'm doing it this way. And so yeah, you need to take that cover off. And when you have oil in the engine, you need to first put that bike on a, to the center stand with like a half inch thick wooden block underneath one side of the center stand that'll keep the oil from uh, spilling out. And then you just use um, a pair of uh, 10 and 8 millimeter wrenches to loosen that bolt and then tighten it back up again. That's all you have to do. And when you loosen it, it allows the spring inside the cam chain tensioner mechanism to push a little harder on cam chain and then you tighten it to set it back in place. So although I'm pretty sure I did successfully tighten the cam chain, I went for a quick ride around the block and the top end noise was still there, so I had not fixed all the problems yet. Alright, just changing the oil and not sure what I can say about an oil change that you probably don't already know, you know, you just uh Pull the drain plug off of there and let the oil drain out and put the drain plug back in there. Now what I'm doing extra though today uh, is I'm catching a sample of the oil into that little bottle there and sending it off to a uh, oil analysis laboratory. And they can look in the oil and tell me what metals are in there and what other chemicals are in there that shouldn't be such as you know, gasoline and water and They'll probably tell me, you know, the amount of aluminum and copper and steel. And I'm suspecting that they're going to see a lot of, a lot of metal. You'll see. Okay, so when I was draining the oil just now, you could visibly see the metallic flakes in the oil. And what I'm thinking is that's aluminum from the cam from the cam chain hitting the uh, aluminum channel inside the engine and so actually I grabbed a sample as it was draining and I'm gonna send that to Blackstone Labs who will do a, an oil analysis and they'll tell me what kind of metals are in it and everything else so hoping that it's aluminum and not steel so all right, I'm gonna continue now I'm gonna adjust the tappets because you gotta keep up on the maintenance on these bikes. You know, I, I, maybe it was 2,000 miles since I've, actually more like 3,000 miles since I've adjusted the tappets, and it's supposed to be every 1,500 miles, I think. And so, I think I'm hearing a top end noise, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's what it is, because I don't want this engine to get any damage. It's my baby. All right, and now on to the tappet adjustments. And you need to do this when the bike is cold, the engine is cold, so that when the metals expand as it heats up, it, the clearances are within spec. And this is probably the least uh, fun job to do on the whole engine tune-up, but one of the more critical ones. And so um, the tappets are what, it's the moving part that connects the cam to the valves. 
And so the way we adjust those is you first have to take off all four of those cap it, those uh, tap it covers with a 19 millimeter wrench. And then you use some feeler gauges to feel the, the clearance in there between the tappet and the valve stem. But you first have to put that cylinder you're working on in top dead center. And not only just that cylinder needs to be in top dead center, but it needs to be on either the compression stroke or, or not, depending on if it's intake or exhaust valve. And please just uh, consult the factory service manual for this. In fact, everything I'm telling you today is in conjunction with the factory service manual. Um, if you need that, you can download that from my website, and I'll put a link to that on the, on the video now. And if you're trying to check the clearance between the tappet and the valve stem, and you can't get the feeler gauge to go in there at all, that probably means it's not on the right, it's not on the right stroke the engine or it's not in top dead center. And another tip for uh, setting the clearance correctly, what I like to do is I like to take the feeler gauge I'm using and I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's a 0 0.03 millimeters. So I slide that feeler gauge in there after having um, opened up the clearance a little bit and then close it down again onto the feeler gauge until I can just barely can just barely slide it around in between those two metal surfaces. And then tighten down that locking nut, but you also gotta be careful in tightening that down not to change the adjustment when doing that, which can and will happen. So it is very tricky, it's very tricky. It's especially tricky on the intake ones because you have the gas tank in the way, but it can be done as you're witnessing me do it here even with the gas tank still on the bike. And while the inspection plate is still off, so you can see if the cylinders are in top dead center or not, it's time to do the ignition so we'll be both checking the static timing and we'll be looking at the point gap and make, making sure it's all good. Now on these little bikes, there's only one pair of points and it's used for both cylinders. It's called a wasted spark setup. So the first thing you do is you take that little cover off the ignition module and then you, you turn the engine over until the point gap is at its maximum. It's open as much as it will and you just slide your feeler gauge in there and make sure it's, it is what it's supposed to be. And I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what that clearance is, but it's that number is in the factory service manual and the uh, and the owner's guide. And for me, I was lucky. It was just uh, spot on. Didn't need any adjustments at all. Moving on now to checking the timing. Now we're just checking the static timing, not the uh, advanced timing or when the engine is actually running. This will tell us when the spark plug fires when the engine's just idling. Um, if you need to know when the spark plug fires when you're revving up, you'll need a timing light for that. And that's called advanced timing. But for static timing, all you need is a little test light. So I'm just using an old car headlight. And you connect one lead to the metal strip on uh, the ignition module. And the other, I was grounding it to the exhaust. And then you turn the engine over um, and you pay real close attention to when the light comes on. So it turns off there and wait for it. There, it came right on. You saw that? Let's do it again. But what I want you to look for is, look at the indicator marks. So the light came on right after the T, but really it's supposed to come on at the F mark. So my timing is too late. It uh, needs to be advanced. So now I need to advance the timing. All 
All right, now the way you adjust the timing, the way you change it, um, you have to loosen the two screws that's holding the ignition module against that aluminum case. And that allows you to turn it clockwise or counterclockwise with your fingers. And just move it, give it a little tiny bit of adjustment and tighten it back down with one of the two screws and then check the timing again. See if it, you know, helped or made it worse and then just kind of go, you know, trial and error with that. So I somehow managed to screw up the video of, uh, of me checking the timing after I had corrected it. And I was going to show you how the index mark lined up with the F mark instead of the T. But, so, we'll just skip ahead now to putting the oil back in. I'm using some Shaw Rotella um, synthetic blend. And I like to use Rotella because it has additives that help with the non-roller cams in these old engines. I mean, it's not exactly a tractor engine, but it still helps to be using this oil that's made for diesel engines just because of the... Well, modern cars have roller cams, this engine does not. But also, modern cars have catalytic converters. That's You wouldn't want to use this oil with a car that has a catalytic converter. But you can use it here. So that's as much as I'm going to say about oil. That's a whole other topic for another day. But when I'm checking the oil level, I'm going to take the dipstick that's on the end of the, the cap that screws on, and I'm just going to set it on the engine. You don't screw it in. You just set the threads against the top of the thread surface, and that's the height it needs to be when you're checking the oil. Alright guys, I'm feeling good because it is running way smoother and way quieter now. And I was really worried that like I blew out the cam or something because uh, there was so much metal in the oil. I'm still going to send in that oil sample, but um, that engine's going to keep going for a long time now. So there's still a few more things for me to do. Um, I need to sync the carbs and set the idle and set the air idle mixture screws whatever they're called and um we're just gonna have to tune in next time to see that because i'm about out of battery on this camera and about out of daylight too so that'll be have to be done tomorrow subscribe subscribe to my show guys peace